How to Make a Guitar Part 2 Hello and welcome back to Zim Guitars. From our last video, we discussed various steps in making a guitar and we continue from this video. So, thanks for checking out this second video. Straight away, let's talk about setting your sights the truss rod cover. Set your sights on the truss rod cover you could buy this to save yourself some time but it's easy and fun to make. Pick the material earmarked for the truss rod cover and make sure that you mark 1 8 of an inch of thickness all around the blank. After which you should cut the plate to the marked thickness. Draw the shape you want onto the blank then sand the edges till you are satisfied with the result. Test it out to make sure that it fits, then you can proceed. Make a truss rod. After this is done, you will have to craft a truss rod. If you are the DIY kind of person, you might want to make your truss rod yourself and we applaud your energy. But the process of making a truss rod from scratch is worthy of being a standalone video. Go back to your fretboard. Make that you have your inlays in place, cut the fret slots to optimum depth in. Sand the surface to a minimum of 320 grit, some people go as far as sanding it down to about 2000 grit. After this is, you need to condition the wood of the fretboard before installing the fret wire. Most woods do not need finishing. However, if you made use of maple wood for your fretboard, Make sure that you use high quality wax to finish the fretboard. The next step is to drill the holes for where the turners will be installed. Be very precise when carrying this out, you have to make sure that these holes are evenly spaced. Such that there will be no contact between the backs of the turners. Also, the holes being drilled have to be precisely the exact size for the turners. The final step towards completing the fretboard of your guitar is applying a finish coat on the fretboard. Mind you, it isn't necessary to do so. However, if you do decide to apply a finish coat, you can make use of true oil as it contains hardeners which give a waterproof finish to your guitar neck while also leaving no stickiness to the wood. Finish the guitar body. Once you are done with the guitar neck, you want to use some body fill on the guitar body. We recommend making use of high quality wood filler. Make sure that you apply several thin layers of the body filler on your guitar. And add fillers in places where there are dents and dips on the surface of the guitar body. After completing the filler job on the raw wood, use some masking tape in the neck pocket and hang the guitar body in an area where you can paint it. Use a high build automotive primer on the guitar body before glazing it and applying spot putty. Apply a top coat to the guitar body. This process requires some level of expertise, therefore, we recommend that you outsource this part of the job to an automotive paint shop. However, if you think that you can handle this yourself, you can make use of car paint and some nitrocellulose lacquer on top of the clear coat before adding several coats of carnauba wax to it. Shield your guitar body. It is recommended that you shield every electronic cavity on your guitar body with a material that will aid in reducing that annoying 60 Hz hum that is connected with the electric guitar. You can make use of copper leaf paint. Major cavities include the control cavity, the switch cavity and the back side of their cover plates. Join the neck and the guitar body. Using a 1 and 3 quarters inch screws and stainless steel washers, attach the guitar neck to its body. To start, pinpoint where the screws should go and drill small pilot holes in them. Attach some counter sink holes at the back of the guitar body then clamp the guitar neck securely before drilling in the screws. And now you have a fully formed guitar body. Don't be in a hurry, these aren't acoustic guitars. 
you still need to work on the electronic components of the guitar. Wire up the guitar. Pass the pickup wires through the holes you drilled during the initial portion of building your guitar. Place the pickups into the cavities in the front part of the guitar, then proceed to fasten them firmly. Repeat the same process for the tone, volume and pickup selector controls. You also have to fasten the input of the guitar cord. To get this done, using 3 feet of telephone wire jack should be sufficient. All you have to do is strip down the wire and you are good to go. Using the schematics from the pickups that you purchased, you should find it pretty easy to connect the controls and the input for the guitar cord to the pickups. To get started with the connections, you need to have electronics soldering iron close by, the basic soldering iron should work just fine. Make sure to use electrical tape to mask any connections in the guitar to any short circuit from occurring later on. Cover the cavities and screw them shut once you are done with wiring up your guitar. Add strings to your guitar. We assume that you remembered to buy some strings as we stated earlier. String up your guitar using your favorite string gauge. Try playing your guitar for a bit before plugging it in, tune it as much as possible till it is perfect enough for you, take care to not snap your strings. Once everything is in order, plug in your guitar and see how your latest creation is holding up. It feels good to create your very own guitar, doesn't it? You might need to take it to the nearest guitar store to have some minor adjustments done. Such as changing the guitar's bridge pins or its saddle height. In conclusion. It might be a lengthier process than making an acoustic guitar but building an electric guitar can be one of the most rewarding moments in the life of a guitarist. You might even get a liking for it and decide to produce several more for your personal use or sale. Please be advised that the process of building a guitar requires patience and commitment. Therefore, we advise that you do not commence such a project until you are sure that you will see it through to the end. Or you will end up wasting your money, time and resources. We know that the urge to be involved in every aspect of building your guitar will be very strong. However, you should outsource whatever aspect of the process that you cannot handle yourself to prevent yourself from sustaining injuries. Building your guitar doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be involved in the manual process. You can always commission a guitar maker to get the job done while you focus on other things. Also, we recommend that you make use of genuine materials when building your guitar. Cheaper isn't always better and striping your guitar after a short period for repairs isn't something you want to go through. If you've enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell so you'll know once we post a new video. Also drop a comment below so we can know your thoughts. Finally, don't forget to check the description below for more details. And visit our site, www.zimguitars.com for more awesome guitars content like this.